Once upon a time, there lived a girl called Enubema. She lived with her parents in the village of Umwachi. She was 10 years old when a man called Ezele, who was 45 years old, came with his family to seek for her hand in marriage. Her parents accepted the union because he was from a rich family. They allowed Ezele to pay the bride price without a backward glance. Enubema did not know what was happening because she was very little. She thought her parents were celebrating a, a ceremony for something pertaining to the lives they lived. She was not aware that she was being given away to an old man in marriage. That evening, after the ceremony, her parents packed her things, her belongings, and told her, she was leaving the family to go and live for the people who had come to do the party. Enubema refused to go because she loved her family so much, but her parents would not listen. She was shocked that her beloved mother could easily tell her to go and live with someone without even consulting her or discussing about it with her. When Enubema saw that her mother was not willing to listen, she ran to her father. But her father also pushed her away, insisting she must go with them. Papa, please do not let me be taken away, she cried. But she pushed her towards the family. She ran back to her mother. Mother, please, I didn't want, I don't want to go. Don't you love me anymore? She asked. Why do you want me to go with them? I love you all, my mom. Please, mother, help me. I don't want to go to strangers. I don't know them. They want to take me away from you, mother. And I love you so much. Please, mother, don't let them take me away from my, my daddy, from you and my sisters. Her mother was crying also, and she became confused. She did not understand it at all. Enunubema was looking from her mother to her father to her sibling. But one thing she want, did not want was going away with the family. When she refused to follow them, Ezele's mother came to her and convinced her that she was just going to help them. She should not be worried that she would personally bring her back home very early the next morning. She wiped the little girl's face and told her she was only helping them to carry some things back home. And Enubema trusted her. After that explanation, Enubema agreed to follow them with the mind that she will be returning home the following day. She believed an elderly person would not lie to a small girl like herself. And so when Ezele's mother took hold of her hand as they were about to leave, she willingly followed her. They all made their way to the village, which was very far from Umachi. When they got to Azuku, which was a... Uh, uh, the village of the man, Enubema, they took Enubema into the house. And that was the house that uh, the husband lived with his parents, very rich family. They made their way to the family house where they all lived together. On reaching the house, she was taken to Izile's bedroom. It had already been prepared for herself and her husband, but she had no idea of, about it. Ezele walked in a nearby village and only came home at weekends. So as soon as they got home that day, he left for work. Enubema was all alone in the bedroom and was marveling at the beautiful room she was to sleep in. The room was occupied by a wide bed and rich decorations. But that night, she was afraid. She was alone and fear gripped her. She was not used to sleeping alone. She shut her eyes tightly, closed, tightly closed, and covered herself head to toe with her wrapper as she slept on the big bed alone. She had always slept with her parents in their one-bedroom apartment and never knew what loneliness in the midst of riches was in her entire life. She woke up very early the following morning with the excitement of preparing to rush back home to see her family the following day. She hurriedly swept the, uh, that very day. She hurriedly swept the house. 
washed off the place and took her bath to get ready. She had been up for more than four hours waiting for the family to wake up and take her back home. But to her surprise, everyone in the house was still sleeping. She was almost crying but managed to hold her patience in control to wait for them to wake up and get ready. She did not want them to see her as a girl with that manners. At last, the members of the household woke up for the day and went about their duties. Enubema greeted them respectfully and was angry within her, but kept silent at the way they were behaving. They had promised to take her back home very early in the morning, but they had not fulfilled their promise. It was almost noon now, and they were not even ready to move at all. This is less family were surprised by the way Enubema had cleaned everywhere before they woke up. They were highly impressed to have been so orderly and able to tidy up the house in such a manner showed she had been properly brought up. These less parents were happy to have chosen such a hard-working girl for their son. This had been unwilling to get married at 45. He was still single. He was always after how he would work hard and make more money because he didn't want to live a poor life. Now he was a rich man and still refused to marry. They had to look for a wife for him and force him to get married. They had more... Uh, in fact, the parents were, were surprised when he refused to marry. But they had, they had to choose this small game that would respect and obey him. Enubema could not wait any longer. She went to his alias mother and told her she was ready to go back home because her parents must be worried about her by now. The elderly woman felt sorry for the little girl. She told her to sit down and quietly explain to her the situation she was now in. She told her that she was not getting, she was not going back home anymore because she now belonged to their family. She watched the look of horror flicker through Enubema's face and explained to her that for her to go home to her family again, she would need to take a permission from her husband. It was not until he granted her the permission to go back home that she could go. And he would have to tell her how long she would stay with her parents before she would be able to visit them and come back. She went further to say, that was the tradition, and the, that tradition was tradition. She said she also passed through it, and all married women from their tribe, including her mother, also passed through such a situation. Edo Meba could not believe her ears, so from now on she would not be free to see her own family when she wanted. She thought, crying. Thoughts of her loving parents and siblings rushed through her mind, flickered through her mind as she listened to the elderly lady talking. It was absurd to hear such words from the old woman. Why her parents would allow such a thing to happen to her of all people, she could not fathom. They've betrayed her love and trust. She kept on crying all the more and refused to eat. It felt as though her parents had sold her off to another man. She no longer had the right to go to her own family any time she wanted. She thought sadly and felt highly dejected. What a world. Does it mean my life has no meaning anymore? She thought. My own feelings, my family, they are going to become strangers to me now because I have to get married. Why at this age? I'm too young to marry. Ten years alone is too, too much for me to bear, she cried. Mama and Papa have betrayed me. I will never forgive them for this, she muttered silently, crying in her room and refusing to speak to anyone in the household. After all these years, this is what they've done to me, she thought, sobbing. For two good days, she refused to eat, and the family became really worried. They had to send for Ezele, her husband, and that evening Ezele came back home from where he was working to see if he could calm her down. 
Enobema did not even know Ezele was her husband. She thought he was an uncle in the house. So that night, when he uh, called her into the bedroom to talk to her, she followed him respectfully, thinking he would be able to help her out of the situation and help her get back home. He took her in his arms and was touching her head and trying to make her comfortable. The little girl responded in an uncle and niece manner. Mother said you've refused to eat for the past two days. Why? Why is it that? Is it true? Yes, uncle, she replied. Why? He asked again. Why did you refuse to eat? Do you want to kill yourself with hunger? I don't want to stay here. I want to go back home to my family, she replied. They tricked me to come here, and I don't want to live here. I want to go home, she kept on saying. Okay, replied Izele, smiling and touching her hair like a big uncle. Don't cry, I'll take you home when I'm not working. But you must give me a little time to take permission from my work. Her face brightened immediately, and she began to smile. But you must eat from now on. If you want me to take you back home, he said. Otherwise, you will get tiny and your parents will think we are not feeding you. Yes, uncle, I will eat from now on, provided you take me back home, she said. Ezele asked his younger sibling to bring food for them. And the two ate silently in the bedroom without Enubema knowing what was actually happening. After the meal, Ezele told her she must sleep in the room with him and not cry anymore. He made her comfortable and said he was going to take care of her so that nobody would make her happy. He pampered her to fall asleep on the bed. When she had fallen asleep, he lied down beside her and also slept off. It was very late in the night that Ezele held the little girl who was fast asleep on the bed. He took her into his hands and forced himself into her. And she woke up with a start at the pain. She started to shout and quickly he held her mouth, cutting off the sound until he was through with her. She was crying and bleeding profusely. Ezele woke his mother up and handed the little girl over to her. His mother quickly understood what was happening and tried her best to clean her up and make her comfortable. The next morning, as soon as cock crew, Enobema packed her little belongings and went to sit outside the house, crying to be taken back home to her parents. She could not even walk. She was in complete pain. Wicked people, she cried. They want to take me away from my parents and kill me. She sat outside refusing to talk to anyone until Ezele came out to forcefully carry her inside the house and apologized to her. He explained that he was only doing this as his duty because he had already paid a bride price and she now belonged to him. He was now her husband and she was now his wife. He told her that was what husband and wife usually do together. It took a long time before Nubema gradually began to accept life the way she really found it. She had now accepted fate as it was, and with a lot of resentment, she threw the thoughts of her family out of her mind for treating her that way. She refused to accept her mother-in-law as a friend, but kept it within her. The only friend she managed to keep was easily her husband, who tried as much as he could to make her happy and gave her all the comforts of life. Enubema was now 20 years old. She had lived with the family for a good 10 years and had been having a series of miscarriages. Each time she took in, she would have a miscarriage. The family became worried and her mother-in-law started getting worried and always complained about it. She would be telling everyone at home, that she had sought for a wife for her son to have many children, sons and daughters in the family, because he was the only son of the family. And now the wife could not even bear him a child. Enubema was now feeling out of place in the house. I was always going to the stream to sit there after doing a work at home. 
It's a less one that did not waste any more time. She went into the village this time to choose a mature old lady for her son. Isele was not happy about it, but there was nothing he could do because he was actually getting on in age. He was now 55 years old and really needed children, otherwise his lineage would be completely wiped out since he was the only son. He felt sad and sorry for Enubema. She was just 20 and he had come to love her. He felt old and father-like before her but adored and gave her anything she wanted. But he discovered money could not really buy happiness. Within a span of five years, the new wife was already having three children and three daughters, no son. Isile was happy that he was not having children, but his mother was not happy at all about that. She wanted sons for her husband's lineage to be preserved, without which she would lose the entire family name. The new wife, Aku, and her children were another problem for Enubema. Each time the children went close to her, their mother would take them away. She would say Enubema was a man and rain insults on Enubema. She was jealous of Enubema's youthfulness, despite the fact that she was not having any child. One day, Enubema went to the stream as usual to wash clothes. And after washing, she sat down on her tree trunk, crying by the stream. She wanted to spend some time alone before she would return home to the glibbering of the other wife and her mother-in-law. Everywhere was quiet because by then, people were no longer by the side of the stream. Suddenly, a middle-aged woman came out from nowhere and greeted her. She answered and greeted her in reply. She saw that the woman was old enough to be a mother to her and prostrated respectfully before her. Come and help me lift up this pot of water, my daughter, she requested of Enubema. Enubema hurriedly got up and walked towards where she was indicating. Enubema saw the pot was filled with water. She helped the lady to lift the pot and place it on her head. I was about to move away when the woman said, Thank you, my daughter, but wait. Enubema stood with a bright smile on her face and replied, Yes, ma. As she replied to us, she looked at the woman who said, Wipe off the tears on your face. From now onwards, do not cry anymore. For I will give you your heart desire, she said, smiling at her in a motherly fashion. Yes, ma. Thank you, ma. And I will not cry anymore, ma. She replied, wiping her tear-stained face with the back of her hand. You are a blessed soul. That is why you are facing all this. Do you understand? But, <laughs> don't worry. Your sorrows have been removed. She said, now go back home and live in joy. Start going and don't look back until you get home. Enubema picked up the clothes she had washed and left for home without a backward glance and did not know the woman had disappeared. Three months later, Enubema became pregnant, and it was surprising to everyone in the family and village. Ako, the second wife, would always laugh and say Enubema was carrying stones in her stomach. Nine months later, Enubema gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. The entire family was in jubilation and Ezele's joy knew no bound. The message got round and Enubema's family finally came to visit her. They stayed overnight before they went back to their village. More than 10 years had gone by now and her parents were like strangers to her. She was withdrawn towards them and focused more on her child. The second wife did not know what to do anymore as she saw her mother-in-law changed her attitude suddenly and started favoring Enubema. The baby was named Eze, and when he was 15 years old, the village king died. The oracles of the land point, pinpointed Eze, Enubema's son, as the chosen one to rule the kingdom. When he came to power, Enubema made sure the law to marry off little girls in the way she had been married off to Ezele, at that tender age, was abolished in the kingdom. That is the end of the story. Please share the videos.
Don't forget to subscribe, like, and press the notification bell in order to get the new story videos I publish. Thanks for watching.